Hello, hello and welcome to maybe the last video on this channel for this year. End of the year has come really fast, so I thought maybe we can do a video about my five favorite photos connected with the five favorite videos to that. You might have not known that, but I live really close to the sea, as you can see. The place I live in is really right next to the sea, but I spend my time mostly in the forest. But next year we may be gonna do some more seascapes and maybe with that I had a scouting a trip around here, took some mobile photos maybe some night shots, but now actually the tide pools that I was interested in are freezing. So we have to see how that turns out. Let's start with the three wildlife photos that I thought are the best from this year. And wildlife photos are a bit different than landscape photos because you have to be there, you have to be patient and you have to be lucky. And also you have to try to not interrupt the animal to get as, yeah most natural behavior as possible. And the first shot I want to talk about is the musk ox from Dovrefjell. And you see it sleeping on the snow, so this turned out to be really natural, as natural as possibly can be with a group of people around. I got like 20, 30 meters close, but only with a guide. So don't do this without a guide. And it's kind of, <laughs> people say magical, but I just like about this photo that the animal doesn't care about us. It realized, the gr whole group realized that we're not a threat and they could just relax on the snow. I got a calm shot, peaceful shot, and I also have some depth to the shot because I have uh, the hill in the front as a bouquet. So depth in a shot always helps out a great deal, makes nearly every photo better. I don't even know what photo depth wouldn't make better. And the second photo is also connected to Dovrefjell and it's my favorite wildlife photo anyhow of this year. I can't really say that I rated the photos much, but this is my favorite from Dovrefjell and so I think from the year and it's the Arctic Fox. And on this photo, the fox is just hopping through the stones. It's really natural. I have the whole animal. It was not about getting close. It was about being there in the moment, getting the shot and I got it. So. It's as simple as that, that's why I like it. Also, I wanted to have the Arctic Fox in some of her. Have some winter photos, they're nice, but that was what I wanted for this year especially. Last wildlife photo is from a trip to a bit more central in Norway, south of Norway in Telemark. And we spent the 10 hours in the wildlife hide. I put the link up here so you can check the video out if you're interested. It's not like super special animals turned up. It was just squirrels. And it was not like it was the perfect time of the day. It was shortly after midday. But even though it's like no clouds, the sun came perfectly through the trees and just made the scene in the forest really cinematic. That's why I called it cinematic squirrel. I just like the shot. And even though it's like an animal you would meet really easily, we put in the time of waiting so long to get kind of the right conditions by coincidence. So it's just art of being there, wildlife photography, I guess. The last two pictures of my five favorite pictures of this year are landscape photos. Didn't take too many landscape photos this year, but it was a challenge, let's say that. I moved to Kristiansand and there are not many mountains around. Mountains are the normal thing I shoot when I shoot landscapes. So I had to adapt. Now you could see, I could have made more seascapes. Yeah, you didn't see that I live at the coast even because I was in the forest and trying to be better at forest photography. Haven't done that really before because forest is a lot of chaos. And one technique to help me with that was the intentional camera movement technique. Not sure if you have to call it a technique. It's just <laughs> longer shutter speed and you move the camera around. And I basically got that shot, which is basically just trees going up in a straight manner. And I always love it if you try something new, because I haven't tried a new technique in maybe two, two years nearly. You try something new and it turns out great. And I think that's the fun about photography and in general learning new stuff. If it just works. Last shot is from the video uh, something how to become a better photographer and what i like about this photo is that yes i went out on a day that was supposed to be foggy and then it wasn't so i was confronted with conditions that i couldn't prepare for i just had to try to get a shot because we're hanging often in front of a mobile and watching the yeah the forecast for the weather and it can be so wrong especially in norway 
So it's good to go just out and try something. And I did that on a day while I talked about we're gonna just try something. The fog disappeared and I was confronted with a whole other scene. The sun came straight through, it was midday, but it helped me for that shot. So I used the sun star to attract the eye and then pull you over the tree into the picture. I have a nice bedding on the forest floor and also I have the trees that are really structured in the back. So I think that just turns out really good. And it's not maybe the best shot, but I think it's my best forest shot of this year. It's structured, it's clean. If you like this video, press the like button, follow me around for the next year. I'm really glad that so many people followed around for the first year and you can check out this other video. I'll link it up here where you can vote for what I do next year, Dolomites or Svalbard. Not like do, but video wise. And I just wish you a really good new year and I hope to see you soon. Bye.